This video is a continuation in our series on the spinal cord and in this video we are going to take a look at plexi and our peripheral nerves. We have this video is um, going to be a little bit long because I'm going to cover all of our plexi and major nerves therein. So hold on to your butts, it's going to be a great ride. We have four plexi, our cervical plexus, our brachial plexus, our lumbar plexus, and our sacral plexus. Now a plexus is an area where nerves are going to fuse together and move apart making networks of nerve fibers where they fuse and go apart and create a nice little web. So I just highlighted the brachial plexus. We also have a cervical plexus up here. Our lumbar plexus is this group here and our sacral plexus is this group here. So let's take a look at those individually. The only nerve that we are going to learn in our cervical plexus is our phrenic nerve. So we can see it highlighted here in dissection and that phrenic nerve is going to be coming out from our cervical plexus and moving downwards into our thoracic cavity. So our cervical plexus is up here and our phrenic nerve is going to come down and it actually innervates our pericardium and our pleura and if we had lungs here then we would be innervating our pleura and our motor innervation and our motor innervation is going to come down to our diaphragm and so our phrenic is going to serve to initiate and control respiration. Next up we have our brachial plexus. In our brachial plexus we have five nerves we're going to look at. Our musculocutaneous nerve, our axillary nerve, which is not labeled on this guy, he's right here. Here we go, our axillary nerve, our median nerve, ulnar nerve, and radial nerve. Starting with our musculocutaneous nerve. This is going to be from our brachial plexus and our composition is mixed, meaning we're carrying both sensory and motor fibers. So if we take a look on our left, our musculocutaneous nerve is going to innervate the skin of our anterolateral forearm. That's the anterior and lateral side of our forearm. We are also going to innervate a portion of our elbow joint and our biceps brachii is going to be our motor innervation along with our brachialis, which remember the brachialis sticks out on either side underneath the biceps brachii. Our axillary nerve, also from the brachial plexus, also mixed in composition, is going to innervate the skin of our lateral shoulder and arm. So if we take a look at our picture, our axillary nerve is coming out to our shoulder here. So we can picture our skin of our shoulder on the outside. That's where we are innervating for sensory fibers. So we're collecting information and taking it into the central nervous system. For our motor innervation, we are going to innervate both our deltoid muscle and our teres minor. So here we have our teres minor, these muscle fibers here that sit in our infraspinous fossa and then our deltoid which sits over the top of our shoulder. 
Our radial nerve, also from the brachial plexus, it's going to be mixed in composition, is going to innervate the skin of our posterior arm. So that means the skin up here on the back of your arm. We're also going to innervate our posterior and lateral forearm and wrist. We are going to innervate our elbow, wrist, and some of the joints in our hands. As far as motor innervation, we are going to innervate all extensor muscles of the arm. So this is going to be our triceps brachii and all forearm extensors. So quite a lot. If you are doing any um, extension of your arm, that is going to be your radial nerve acting there. Our median nerve is thus named because it runs down the medial side of our entire arm where it comes out to some of our fingers. So again, brachial plexus, mixed nerve carrying sensory and motor information. We are going to innervate the skin of the lateral two-thirds of our hands and digits one through four. So we can see that here on our picture with our digits and uh, the skin of our lateral two-thirds of our hands. And then you can see we're going to innervate the tips of a few of our digits as well. Um, and some of the joints in our hand. As far as motor innervation goes, we are going to innervate forearm flexors. So our radial nerve did all of the extensors. Our median nerve is going to do many of our forearm flexors. So we see our brachioradialis and our palmaris longus as well as our flexor carpi radialis. So those are the three forearm flexors that we are going to uh, focus on for our median nerve. Our ulnar nerve from the brachial plexus with mixed composition is going to run along the ulna and come up to a couple of our fingers as we see in these pictures. It is also mixed, so our sensory innervation is going to include a portion of our palm and medial hand, and then a couple of our fingers. We're going to include the elbow joint and joints in our hand. Just depends on what joints you're looking at there. Uh, but this right here, where we have the cubital tunnel highlighted, we can see our ulnar nerve coming along and running through this little groove that you have right there. Everybody find that groove on your body. So your medial epicondyle on your humerus is the big knobby one that you feel in your elbow. And in that groove sits your ulnar nerve. And guess what? That's your funny bone. So if you hit your ulnar nerve, you get these zinging sensations coming down your arm and to your pinky fingers. Um, we've got a little bit going to our ring finger and we have a little bit coming out to the median palm, but that awful, awful feeling that you get when you hit your funny bone, you're actually stimulating your ulnar nerve. So I'm going to erase those marks that I just made so that we can see that our ulnar nerve is coming along our ulna and it is going to innervate our flexor carpi ulnaris, the last of those forearm flexors that we did not innervate with our median nerve. So there are the five nerves of the brachial plexus. So let's move on to our lumbar and sacral plexi. These guys are so close together that it is frequently difficult to tell them apart. So we can treat them as a group or we can treat them separately. We are going to take a look at two nerves, um, which actually turns into four nerves because of these two guys down here. Um, but our femoral is from our lumbar plexus and our sciatic is from our sacral plexus. 
So when we look at our femoral nerve, also mixed in composition from our lumbar plexus, we are going to see that we are innervating a lot of skin. So here, anywhere where you see fem, that is going to be innervation from our femoral nerve. Okay, so we are looking at the skin of the anterior, medial, and lateral knee and thigh. That's this whole area right there. Okay, skin of the medial leg and foot here, and our hip and knee joints. That's going to be our sensory information. For our motor innervation, we are coming out to the anterior side of the thigh. What's on the anterior side of our thigh? Our sartorius and our quadriceps group. So all of those are going to be innervated by our femoral nerve. Lastly, we have our sciatic nerve. Our sciatic nerve is from the sacral plexus and it is mixed. And what you'll see here is our sciatic nerve is going to run down the posterior side of our leg until it hits our knee. And when we hit our knee, we are going to split into a tibial and a common fibular nerve. So this slide is going to focus on the tibial nerve. For our sensory innervation, we are going to innervate the skin of the posterior leg and plantar skin. So the back portion of our uh, calf and the bottom of our foot. We're also going to innervate some of our knee and some of the joints in our foot. For motor innervations, we're looking at our hamstrings and our gastrocnemius. So here we have our biceps femoris and semitendinosus and our semimembranosus that make up our hamstrings. And then we're also going to take a look at our gastrocnemius. The other side of our sciatic nerve, so we can see our sciatic nerve is whole above the knee and then we split. The second side is our common fibular nerve. So we're still calling it from the sacral plexus. We're still calling it mixed. And sometimes fibular is listed as peroneal. So we can see that this nerve comes along the anterior side. We've got a little bit going down the posterior side. But if we take a look at this picture on the right, you can see our common fibular is going to split into a superficial and a deep. We're just going to treat those as the same thing and we're going to all call it common fibular. So for sensory innervation, we have the anterior and distal one-third of our leg, the top of our foot and toes, and a portion of our knee. For motor innervation, we are, on the previous page, you should have seen your biceps femoris. One of our heads is done by our uh, fibular nerve. But then we also see our extensor digitorum longus and our peroneus longus, which is also called our fibularis longus. So there was the quick and dirty review of our peripheral nerves and what they innervate. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to contact your instructor.